What's up guys, Sonny Carter here, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I got unstuck in my marriage, the one thing that was able to get me unstuck in my marriage, and how we were able to help other people with this one thing, and, um, and really change the game, uh, really, for our marriage and for my life, honestly. Um, and so if you've ever been at a place where you feel stuck in your marriage, um, where you feel more like roommates rather than lovers, your connection's not really there, um, there's no really strong intimacy, then I think this is gonna help you guys. Um, and if you watched my previous video, you saw that I was, I told my origin story of how I was able to identify a concept that really just changed my life and my marriage and I went through the whole story, but I talked about something called life entanglement. So I'm gonna dive deeper into that because that is the one thing that really changed the game for me in terms of my marriage, my relationships, um, how I treat people, um, just how I behave. And so, you know, people ask me a lot, well, what is this life entanglement or life trap? You know, didn't, you know, a lot of times when I explain this concept, um, it's kind of vague for some people. So I'm gonna break it down for you right now. I'm gonna give you a really cool illustration of what a life entanglement is, okay? So I came up with this illustration because I think it closely resembles what, what it is. And, and that's a scratched CD player, right? So if you think of a CD player, that was scratch. Uh, what happens when you put the CD player, if it's scratched, when you get to that part, it's playing, right? It's playing the music, but when you get to that part when it's scratched, it just repeats itself. It kind of just repeats itself in a loop, right? It just repeats, 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 and never continues um, playing the CD. It just skips, 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 and it keeps coming back. Um, you don't see the CD player, it's inside the CD. Um, sorry, you don't see the CD, my bad. Um, it's inside the CD player but you can hear it skipping over and over again. And what do you do? You get annoyed, right? You try to take it out, you try to clean it, um, you put it back in and it's still skipping. So a life, a life trap or a life entanglement is kind of like that, right? It's a negative thought pattern that repeats itself in the back of your mind and you don't know it's there. Just like you can't see the CD player and you don't know it's actually what it's doing, you can't see really that negative habitual thought that's in the back of your mind. Um, but it's there. It's, it's a message that's constantly running and I'm gonna give you guys a quick example in a minute um, In my life and just a, a, a life entanglement that I think a lot of people have and struggle with including myself um, And so it's so it's a habitual negative thought pattern that comes from your past that you experience as a child That just keeps repeating itself in the back of your mind without you knowing it's there and it's driving your behavior It's driving the way you treat your spouse it's, driving the way you behave with your, your kids, it's driving the way you cope, um, it's driving how you get triggered, right? It, it drives everything. And so if you're not aware of the scratch in your CD player in the back of your mind, that message that, that's um, subconsciously running, okay, that's, that's that negative habitual thought pattern, if you're not aware that it's there, then it's going to be controlling your life and having a negative impact in your life without you even knowing it, okay? So I'll give you an example, okay? So this is a good example. Um, so let's say, um, let's say someone's looking in the mirror and, and this, is, this is true for a lot of people, right? They look in the mirror and in reality, they're skinny, right? They, 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 they have a nice physique, um, and, but they look in the mirror and they see that they're not happy with themselves, that they're overweight when reality is that they're not, okay? So I know, I know a lot of people who look in the mirror I have friends who look in the mirror who are skinny. I can't tell you how skinny they are, but then they think they're they're big, they're overweight, and they're not pretty. Okay, so where does that come from? Okay, where does that come from? That comes from okay. So for example, I'll give you one example of how, where that can come from. So if someone grows up as a child, and a parent is always say berating them or scolding them or maybe yelled at them often, now that child doesn't know how to process that. Okay, they just they just kind of internalize what's happening. And that message that the kid is feeling is I'm not good enough, okay? Um, or I, 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 I'm not pretty enough, or I'm not handsome enough, right? So if you have a parent that often, um, not, not parents obviously don't want to deliver that message. Sometimes we get frustrated, um, but there's parents who just, you know, berate their kids. Um, I know my parents was one of them, they, they my parents, my mom, you know, she, God bless her, her soul, she tried to raise me 
and my two crazy brothers, we were we were nuts. But <laughs> but she um, was constantly yelling and berating at us because we were just not listening all the time. We were doing bad things. And so um, so as a child, how I internalized that, okay, was that I'm, I'm, I'm inherently flawed, right? This is the message that was running in, in the back of my mind, that I'm inherently flawed, inherently flawed. I'm not good enough. Um, I can't you know, achieve the things that I want to achieve because I'm not good enough, okay? Now, this can also manifest in other areas, like I'm not pretty enough or um, I'm not talented enough. Um, this, can, this message, okay, of I'm not good enough or I'm, I'm inherently flawed can also show up when we compare ourselves to other people, right? We look and we say, oh man, why is that person, why can I be that way? Um, or, you know, I, I can never do that, right? And so this is just an example of, of one experience as a child, right? Just, uh, you know, being yelled at often as a child, being berated um, can cause something like this. And it, can, it doesn't have to be with your parents, it can be with, you know, maybe being bullied at school or being made fun of. Um, and so now that scratch is on the CD player. The scratch, the CD player in the back of your mind, someone put a scratch CD in there and it's it, as a child and it's running and it's repeating that message that I'm inherently flawed, right? So what happens is when someone treats you like that or when, when, you, when that message gets triggered, you can react in a couple of ways. Um, you can either surrender to that message and say, you know what? You're right, right? Like, if, for example, if you get into an argument with your spouse and you have that, that, um, that life entanglement of I'm not good enough, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm flawed, right? Again, you don't know what's happening, but it's in the back of your mind. But you respond when that message gets triggered. So, if someone, if you have an argument with your spouse and you think, oh man, you know what? I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy to be loved. And so, all of a sudden, you can surrender to that message, or you can fight that message, right? Which means that when someone triggers you with that message, you fight back, okay? Or you can avoid, right? Which is my coping style, is is when my life trap, one of my life traps is abandonment, right? Because uh, my dad left my mom when, um, when she was pregnant with me, so he was never around. And my mom, she worked like two or three jobs trying to take care of me and my, my uh, me and my two brothers, we were all crazy and trying to manage that. And, and so she was really never present emotionally. She was never really there for us. So that message, right, that was a scratch in my CD. That CD player was put in the back of my head with a scratch. As a child, I didn't know how to internalize that, but I internalized it with, you know, um, people who love me will eventually leave me, right? So that was an abandonment life trap that I had. That was a message. Um, now, I go deeper into what these messages are, you know, probably in another video, I won't go into it too deep here, but I just want to kind of scratch the surface of what this life entanglement, what this life trap is. And so that, that message of, of, of people who love me will leave me was in the back of my mind and I didn't even know it was there, okay? So it was, it was driving the way I behaved, it was driving my emotions, it was driving, um, sometimes I would get sad um, when I didn't know why. Um, there was a, um, when, when I first met my wife, when we were going out, I remember she was going away um, to her country for a couple of weeks. And we, I think we were just like maybe um, four weeks into our relationship. And so all of a sudden I started getting really sad. This was years ago. And I was like, why am I feeling sad? This is so strange. And I had no idea at the time what it was, but I, eventually I just came out of it. Um, but when I, when I understood this concept of life trap, life entanglements, and I started to study this out and get training and learn from it, I understood exactly what it was, okay? It was my life entanglement of abandonment. That message, when my wife was leaving to go to her country, that message of people who love me will leave me got triggered, okay? And when it got triggered, my coping style was to either avoid or surrender. In that example, I surrendered to the fact emotionally, unknowingly, subconsciously, I surrendered to that, what, that was what she was gonna leave and never come back. And so I felt really sad. And so I had to come out of it and eventually uh, she came back and, and we went up years later getting married and so it turned out all good. But, um, but that was the driving force that was a scratch in my CD player that was driving the way I behave, okay? 
And so, so I hope that's a little bit more clear. I hope that it helps. So to get unstuck, okay, to get unstuck in, in your marriage, if you feel like your marriage is, um, uh, again, uh, stuck, okay, at, at some point our marriage was like that, I had to figure out, okay, what, what was, what, what life entanglements was causing me to get stuck, was causing me to not connect with my wife, was causing me to not be vulnerable, was causing me to not, to, 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 to not want to get close okay, to my spouse emotionally, right? Um, what, what life entanglement or life trap? Is it abandonment, okay? Um, is it um, um, a vulnerability, right? Where, where there's a life trap where we think that we're always going to be harmed or hurt. Um, that message is another life trap. Um, again, I'm not going to go deep into the specific messages, but I just want to give you a vague concept. Now, one of the life entanglements that a lot of people struggle with um, is mistrust and abuse, okay? Again, so I, this is one of my life traps, right? My two biggest ones is abandonment and mistrust and abuse. And this can show up in, in any area of your life. So the message of mistrust and, and abuse is, okay, people who come into my life cannot be trusted, right? They will hurt me. Um, people who try to get close to me will eventually hurt me. Um, I cannot love others because I will eventually get hurt, okay? So there's a, there's a couple of messages that come with that life trap. And again, it comes from emotions that we internalize as children, experiences that we've had, okay? Um, and so, you know, for example, mistrust and abuse uh, shows up in my life um, in all kinds of areas that, that, but here's the thing, when you're aware, okay, the key, the first step to change is what? Awareness, right? Awareness. So if you are aware of your life entanglement, like I know mine's is abandonment, I know mine's is, is mistrust and abuse, okay? I know that, and I know the feelings I get when that message plays in the back of my mind. So when I'm feeling something, automatically I can tell, boom, that's, that's my message of abandonment, okay? Now, one thing you have to understand about, about these uh, life entanglements is that they are not true, okay? They are messages that run in the back of your mind that cause you to see yourself and the world in a different way that's not reality, right? Like the person who looks in the mirror and, and she's, she, he or she could be skinny, but they look in the mirror and say, you know, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I, I'm, not, I'm not pretty, I'm not handsome. Now, that's not the reality, but that's what our life trap cause us to see about ourselves. And so if we see that about ourselves, then we, we see, um, we see the world differently because now we think the world sees us that way. So I hope this is making some sense. Um, I don't want to get too deep. Like I said, I don't want to get too deep into this, but this is how I got unstuck is I had to become aware, heighten my awareness of the life entanglements in my life, which was mistrust and abuse. I have about four or five of them that are really strong and that I've been working for a long time to, to, to make weaker. And so I've grown um, in that area. I've, I've actually changed and gotten a lot better because I, have, I, I understand now what my life entanglements are. So the first step is become aware of what's the subliminal subconscious message that's running in the back of my mind that's causing me to behave a certain way. Um, understand what that is. Identify the emotions that come with it. Sometimes it takes practice. And then um, and kind of go back and say, okay, where did that come from? Where did that thought come from, from my past? Who treated me a certain way or did something to me that made me have this message in the back of my mind that scratch on the CD player we run over and over and over again without me knowing it okay and so um, again there's a, there's a lot more to this but I just wanted to scratch the surface with you guys um, if you got some value from this uh, leave me a comment um, give me a thumbs up subscribe I'm gonna come out I'm gonna be sharing some more details about this concept of life entanglement um, and combining that with um, biblical scriptures and to really create a formula and a method to really transform marriages um, and, and this, this is a powerful powerful method to do so and so um, leave me some comments let me know your thoughts um, we'll be working on a project to to coming out with some training and courses some stuff we're going to be giving away for free um, on really helping people understand this concept of, of life entanglement and um, to really make it simple for them to identify which ones they have 
um, how to combat it, um, which coping style you have, and so forth. So that's it, guys. And um, appreciate you guys being on this video. I will see you on the next video, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.